It's hard changing your life. It was hard when just over three years ago in the Penobscot building in Detroit, Michigan, where I was operating my business and I fell on some hard times and I was sleeping in my office. It was hard coming into the lobby and the security said, excuse me, Mr. Brown, can we see you for a moment? And I said, yes. And I walked up to the counter and he gave me an envelope. And he said, would you mind reading it here? And I opened the envelope and the envelope was from management that said, this is an office tower. It's not a hotel. Please do not sleep in your office. And I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I just work long hours in creating my business. I'm an entrepreneur. And right now things are bad for me, but they're not going to be this way always. And I just asked for the opportunity to continue to operate like I'm doing. I'm not trying to make this my home. And it was hard coming through the lobby. And sometimes they would laugh. There's a guy talking about becoming successful. And look at him. He's bathing in the bathroom upstairs on the 21st floor. He sleeps on the floor. Him and two other dreamers up there. Look at him. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen, coming to speak to people. And I was facing financial difficulties in my own life. I was behind on my bills and my dreams, and I'm saying to them, you can live your dream. It was hard, ladies and gentlemen. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. I said, God, why, why is this happening to me? I'm just trying to take care of my children and my mother. I'm not trying to steal a rock from anybody. Why did this have to happen to me? It was very hard. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, but I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. toward your dream. It's very important as you hold on to that dream. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. They have come to pass. It's very important for you to know that. Don't say I'm having a bad day. Say, I'm having a character building day. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one to make this happen. I remember this high school teacher, Mr. Leroy Washington, at the end of school one June, it was just a few days before we were supposed to leave. And I just got my report card. And it indicated that I'd fail history. And I'd fail English. And I would have to go to summer school. And I was feeling within myself that I was a failure, that I, I'm slower than most people in, in getting paperwork. And, and I was feeling down on myself and, and, and very negative. And Mr. Washington was giving a speech to the graduating seniors. And I was in 11th grade. And even though I wasn't supposed to be in there, I went in there because the speech he was giving, that speech was for me. And as he talked, my heart began to beat fast. Tears began to run by my eyes and, and I was in the back just listening to him because he said, 
And he was a very dramatic man. I still talk to him to this day. He said, as graduating seniors of Booker T. Washington High School, I want you to know that you are blessed and highly favored. And that as you go toward the future, begin to know that you have greatness within you. And if just one of you here begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals, if just one of you capture the essence of what that means, that you have greatness within you and a responsibility to manifest that greatness, that you can make your parents proud, you can make your school proud, you can touch millions of people's lives and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. And the students gave him a rousing standing ovation. And as he left the auditorium, I ran down the steps and I caught him in the parking lot. I said, Mr. Washington? He said, yes. I said, do you remember me, sir? He said, no. I said, uh, my name is Leslie Brown. My mother, she works in the cafeteria here. I'm one of the twins, Leslie and Wesley. I said, Mr. Washington, but you know, you know, I got these big dreams. You know, I like talking to people. I love people. I said, I, I want to work with people, and I got this dream of buying my mama a home. Could, could I do that, Mr. Washington? He said, it's possible, Mr. Brown. And as he walked away, I called him again. I said, Mr. Washington? He said, what do you want now? I said, um, I'm the one, sir. I said, I'm the one. You, you remember me, sir. I'm Miss Mamie Brown's boy. I'm the one. I'm the one. And you must feel that, that that's why you're here, because you are the one. And I remember when PBS first played one of my specials called You Deserve, one Sunday afternoon in Miami, Florida. I had some friends call him to tell him to tune in. And he watched the program, he called me in Detroit, and I answered the phone, I said, hello? He said, may I speak to Les Brown, please? I said, who's calling? He said, you know who this is. I said, oh, Mr. Washington, it's you. He said, you were the one, weren't you? I said, yes, sir. He said, and you were so crazy. I said, I know, but I'm rich now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor of the Penobscot building, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? I used to listen to tapes day in and day out about See You at the Top, my, my great friend Zig and, and, and Dennis Waitley and different other motivational speakers and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale. And Dexter saying, don't let nobody steal your dream. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. While you're here, and before you go back home to your respective cities and communities, write down at least five reasons on why you deserve your dream on why you won't give up, what's going to make you unstoppable, why you must be unreasonable because logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life, like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny, you've got to be an unreasonable person. You've got to be an uncommon person. So write down the reasons of why you're here. My first major goal was to buy my mother a home. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, what, what will reasons do, Les? Nietzsche said, if you know the why for doing, you can endure almost anyhow. What do you mean by that? If you know why you're doing something, when the hard times come and they're gonna come, 
When the disappointments and the rejections come, and they're going to come by the truckloads, your reasons will be your rod and staff to comfort you, to pick you up. Once again, I got a saying on one of my tapes, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Let your reasons get you back up. If you want to see an interview with a young Bill Gates, check out the video right there next to me. I think you're going to enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I'm used to, to having a company where um, the ideas that I have are, are something that I can easily pursue. So yeah. I think it'd be a, a tough transition.